Well, greetings and welcome to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Pastor G here from Covenant Kingdom International Ministries. And we just want to praise you all for joining with us this morning. Amen. Today is Good Friday. And we're going to talk a little bit about what Good Friday means. Amen. The cross of Christ. Hallelujah. So we just want to thank God for all that he's done and everything that he means to us. Amen. And one of the things, praise God, <coughs> excuse me. One of the things, praise God, that's 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 prevalent in our in our society is we see a lot of crosses everywhere we go. Amen. Let's say let's say this about the cross. The Christian cross is seen as a representation of the instrument of of the crucifixion of of Jesus Christ. It is best it is the best known symbol of Christianity. It is related to the crucifix and the more general family of cross symbols. Amen. So we see that every time we see the cross, we know it's talking about Christianity. And if we look throughout society, especially in, in the jewelry stores, you will see where the cross has been glamorized. Amen. Hallelujah. You got silver crosses. You got uh, uh, gold crosses, copper crosses, crosses made from nails, crosses with Jesus on it. Amen. Ivory crosses, wooden crosses, steel crosses. Amen. But, you know, the Bible says uh, we, we know from 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 the Bible that it's been a, it was an old rugged cross. Amen. So this is the day that the Lord have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The day that Jesus was crucified. Amen. Good Friday. It is a good Friday. Amen. And thank God He didn't stay in the grave. Amen. So right now, let's take a moment of let's take a moment of pray and just let's worship God and thank God for what He has done for us by sending Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you right now in this moment. We want to give you glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for us. Thank you for sending Jesus to save us, to sanctify us, Lord God, hallelujah, to protect us and to keep us, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we want to thank you that this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. As by the cross of Christ, we break every chain. By the blood of Jesus, we break every chain, hallelujah. So we thank you, Lord God that by his cross our sins have been crossed out hallelujah our transgressions have been crossed out hallelujah our iniquities have been crossed out in the name of jesus so father god we just relish hallelujah and thank you for the awesome sacrifice and when jesus said father prepare me a body that i may redeem man back unto you so we thank you lord god that through your substitutionary death on the cross you provided for us a way you provided for us the truth and you have provided for, for us the life. You said, Lord, hallelujah, in your word, that you come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So we thank you, Lord, for following through, hallelujah, for being obedient. For the word says that you humble yourself and humble yourself even to the death. Yes, even the death of the cross. So we thank you, Lord, that you followed God's instruction, hallelujah, and followed through and fulfilled your vision, fulfilled your destiny, fulfilled your purpose here on the earth, Lord. So that now, now God, Lord God, we have an opportunity, hallelujah, to fulfill our purpose because of what Christ has done on the cross. We want to give you the glory. We want to give you the honor, and we want to give you the praise. We honor you this morning, Lord God, on this Good Friday, giving you all the thanks. Thank you for your awesome sacrifice. You paid a price that we could not pay. And hallelujah. No, could we ever even attempt to pay? Lord God, hallelujah. The price was your life and the cost was your blood. So we thank you for shedding your blood. We do give you glory. We do give you honor. And we do give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Amen. We give God praise today. And um, I want to talk, I want to talk to you today, praise God. Hallelujah. About the um oh Lord, my, my my props are falling down. Amen. Well, glory to God. I want to talk to you today and I'll move this over a while and I'll bring it back when, when we're ready for it. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I like my props, I like my, my illustrations, amen. I like my acronyms. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'll, I'll be talking to you today about those. Amen. As we talk about the cross of Christ. Amen. That is that is the central thing about our faith. It's not a religion, it's a faith. Amen. This is what we do, amen. And um I don't want to jump into Sunday's message, but you know what? We have we have the only representative of a faith who is still alive. Amen. Everybody else is dead. Everybody else that follows uh, 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 Buddha, Buddha is dead. Uh, uh, Confucius is dead. Uh, Hare Krishna, um, yeah, he's dead. 
Oh yes, all those other, all those uh, Eastern religions and all those, uh, whatever other religion you may think who had a, the, um, yeah, Muhammad, Muhammad is dead. Amen. Uh, glory to God. So <laughs> we thank God that we follow a risen savior. Amen. A living savior. So before I get into the message, I was doing some research and I found some interesting things about the, the medical aspects of the crucifixion of Christ. Amen. And it was very, a lot of it's, it's very lengthy and it's very detailed and very gruesome. And I'm going to just highlight some of the things, amen, before we get into the word, uh, the word this evening, this, this morning, hallelujah. Listen to what it says about Roman soldiers uh, mock and beat Jesus. And that comes, that comes out, the, the theme from that comes out of uh, Romans chapter 27, verses 28 to 30. It says the soldiers stripped him and put him, put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff on his right hand, knelt in front of him and mocked him, said, Hail, King of the Jews. They said, they spit on him and they took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. Lord have mercy. Every time I read that, I remember me, me, me being delivered from my headaches. I used to have suffer from mind splitting, eye crossing, uh, Lord have mercy, crippling migraine headaches. And when I read this scripture in Matthew chapter 27, when they placed the crown of thorns on his head and when they spat on him and when they took that reed and hit him on the head, I said, that was my headache. This was over, over 50, uh, over 40 years ago. But over 40 years ago, very, very soon after I got saved, I ran into this scripture. This scripture ran into me. <laughs> and uh, I declared that scripture. I claimed that scripture. I received that scripture. And I haven't had a headache since. I haven't had a migraine headache. Now, Satan will try to come and, and sorely tempt you and say, oh, those headaches ain't gone. But I say, you know what? By the blood of Jesus, they're, they're, they're gone. They are gone. And so can you. Amen. If you're suffering from headaches, go to Matthew 27, verses uh, 28 to 30, and claim healing. Hallelujah. For your migraine headache. Hallelujah. It goes, it goes on to say, after they've beaten him, amen, and hit him, hit him on the head again and again with that, with that, uh, with that rod, Jesus was, was then beaten by the Roman soldiers. In mockery, they dressed him in what was probably the cloak of a Roman soldier, which was colored either dark purple or scarlet. He, uh, he also wore a crown of thorns. Unlike the traditional crown, which is, de uh, which is uh, depicted by an open, an open ring, the actual crown of thorns The actual crown of the actual crown of thorns, hallelujah, may have been uh one one to two inches long. Oh Lord have mercy. So the thorns on the crown have been may have been up to one to two inches long. My God. The gospel state that the Roman soldiers continued to beat Jesus on the head. The blows would drive the thorns into the scalp, one of the most vascular areas of the body and forehead, causing severe bleeding. Oh Lord have mercy. So we see the intensity of the beating that Jesus took. And, and I want to, let me backtrack just a minute. For somebody to take that kind of beating and still and still uh, survive as long as he did, uh, he couldn't have been no weak, mamby-pamby, effeminate, soft-looking soft kind of guy. No, this guy was tough. Jesus was tough. You hear me? He wasn't no wimp. Amen. He wasn't no punk. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For anybody to take that kind of a whooping and still keep on and still keep on moving and 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 had it had it full activity of his mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's let's I uh, want to read one more thing and then we'll get into our message. Uh let's go straight to the suffering on the cross. The crucifixion is often and we we get it uh, in Psalm. Let's read this, uh, Psalm 22 verses 16 and 17. Psalm 22 verse 16 and 17 reads, "Dogs have surrounded me." A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. Amen. And that, that was, that, that, that was uh, uh, that's one of the Psalms that was written of, of, of Jesus. Amen. So here, here's what it says about the crucifixion. Glory to God. The crucifixion event is prophesied in several places throughout the Old Testament. One of the most striking is recorded in Isaiah 52 and 13. Amen. And and there, there are several scriptures, but let's let's get down to the meat of, of what the uh, what this cruci what this crucifixion does. Amen. Uh, crucifixion was a practice that originated with the Persians and was later passed on to the Carth the Car the Carthaginians and the Phoenicians. The Romans perfected it as a method of execution, which caused which caused maximal pain and maximum pain and suffering. Amen. Oh Lord, have mercy. 
over a period of time. So this wasn't no quick death, amen? This was torture. This was, this was just plain out torture, amen? The, cru the crucified included slaves, provincials, and the lowest type of criminals. Roman citizens, except perhaps for, so for soldiers who deserted, were not subject to this treatment. Lord have mercy. The crucifixion site was purposely chosen to be outside the city walls because the law forbade such within, within the city walls for sanitary reasons. The crucified body was sometimes left to rot on the cross and, and, and serve as a disgrace, a convincing warning and deterrent to passers-by. Sometimes the subject was eaten while alive and still on the cross by wild beasts. One more thing about the, uh, the, cruci the, the crucifixion. The procedure of the crucifixion may be summarized as follows. The patibulum was put on the ground and the victim laid upon it. He's talking about the crucifix. The cross was laid on the ground and then the victim was placed on it. Nails about seven inches long. Well, let me, you know what? Let me see if I can give you a description of something that's seven. Oh, yes, here we go. The nails were seven inches long. I'm going to show you seven inches. That's, that's, that's seven inches right there. Seven inches. From here to here, seven inches long. Look at that. Can you imagine that? A nail like that going through your body? Lord have mercy. Okay. And we had a, di a diameter of one centimeter, roughly uh, a three-eighths of an inch. They were driven within the wrists and driven within the wrists. The points would go into the would go into the vicinity of the median nerve, causing shocks of pain to radiate through the arms. It was possible to place the nails between the bones so that no fractures or broken bones occurred. Studies have shown that nails were probably driven through the small bones of the wrists. Amen. Not, not the hand, but through the wrist, since nails of the palms would not support the weight of a body. So those pictures that we see, of course, with, with, with holes in Jesus with holes in his hands here, that's that's false because that couldn't that that's not medically accurate. Amen. So the the the, the, the nails were placed right here in his wrists. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In ancient terminology, the wrist was considered to be part of the hand. Standing at the crucifixion sites would be upright posts called, called stipes, standing about seven feet high. In the center of the stipe was a, was a, a, a crude seat called a saddle or sedilium, which served as a support for the victim. The cross was then lifted up, up onto, the, onto the stipes. The feet were then nailed to the stipes. And to allow for this, the knees would have to be bent and rotated, literally being left in a very uncomfortable position. Amen. So we see, oh, Lord, we, we can see the excruciating pain and the detail by which um, Jesus had to suffer. And then, of course, the, uh, the whipping. Amen. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can find something on, 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 him, on him being beat. Oh, yes. Let me find that. Let me find that. Glory to God. Okay, so I can't really access that right now, but uh, we knew that he was whipped by a cat of nine tails. The cat, the the the, the whip itself had fragments of bone, uh, glass, um, uh, sharp stones on on on, on a leather strap, and we know that Christ received. Uh, the, the Bible says uh, forty uh, forty stripes save one, so thirty nine stripes, you know, so that the the, the person won't won't be be killed. By the by the very whipping itself, amen. So it, it became a law in in Roman in Roman times that it, they uh, they got that the 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 person being whipped would only receive thirty nine stripes. So we see the gruesomeness, amen. The awesome torture that Christ had to go through, amen. But there's encouragement today, praise God, because He suffered all that for us, so that we won't have to, amen. <laughs> Glory to God, amen. So I want to talk to you today about the cross of Christ, amen. And you all know I like acronyms. Amen. And that's that's where our message is going to go. And you see, I have my uh, my little my little prop here. I want to talk to you about the cross of Christ. C R O S S. C R O S S. The cross. So the the the, the C in the cross stands for Christ crucified. Let's let's go with that first one. Amen. Christ crucified. Hallelujah. And we see that uh, Christ crucified is found in all the four gospels. It's found in Matthew chapter twenty-seven, verses one to fifty-four. It's also found in uh, Mark's gospel, chapter 15, verses 1 through 40. 
It's found in Luke chapter 23, verses 1 through 48. And it's also found in Mark chapter 15, verses 1 through 40. And that's a lot of scriptures, amen? But we're not going to uh, read any, any of those. I just want to give you those for reference. Let's turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. We're going to read a, a couple of highlight scriptures and then for, for each one of the letters, amen? So C, amen, hallelujah, is Christ crucified. Oh, hallelujah. So um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5 reads as follows. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech, or wisdom of, of or wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. Paul speaking to the, the Corinthian church, amen. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hallelujah. Christ crucified. There it is. And I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and of power. Amen. That's the kind of preaching we need today. Amen. Not flowery words, not words of intellectualism. Amen. Not words of academia, but words, hallelujah, that convey spirit and power. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Verse 5. Amen. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The other scripture I, wanna, I want you to turn to right now is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. So, uh, still in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, chapter 1. And let's go to uh, verses 20 through 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Verses uh, 20. Glory to God. Through 25. And that's and that reads, where is the wise? Amen. Didn't he just get talk, finished talking about the wise, <laughs> about wisdom? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Hallelujah. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world, the world by wisdom knew not God. It, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Listen at that. It, by the foolish, he says, and there's another part in the scripture that says it uh, to the to the and, and we'll get we'll get to it before I get. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh, verse 21, Hallelujah. For after that, in the wisdom of God, for after after that. In the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. So it doesn't take wisdom to know God. He's, he's basically saying here, it does not take wisdom to know God. Hallelujah. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that, that believe. So amen, he's saying here, preaching in, in and of itself is foolish. You know there's a God. Amen. You know there's a God. And there's a scripture that says that uh, uh, in every heart, God has put the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The foolishness of God is, 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 is wiser than the wisest of men, and the weakness of God is stronger than the, the, uh, the strength of men. Hallelujah. So we thank God for that. Amen. And one more scripture, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Let's go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Thank you, Lord. Galatians 2 and 20 reads, for I am crucified with Christ. Amen. There it is again. Christ crucified. Amen. I am crucified. Paul is, 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 is giving a testimony for I am crucified with Christ. That should be our testimony as well. I am crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. And nevertheless, I live yet not I, but, the Christ, but Christ liveth in me and the faith and the life which I now live in the flesh. Hallelujah. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So we thank God. Hallelujah, that Jesus died for us. Amen. Hallelujah. And the life which we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God, who gave his life for us, who was crucified for us. Amen. And then verse 21 says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Amen. So we know there's no righteousness in and of the law. We cannot produce righteousness by living by the law. We receive righteousness by the faith. Amen. By faith in Christ and what he's done on the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. So that, that covers our first one, Christ crucified. Amen. For the C. And for the R, we're going to say, hallelujah, we are redeemed 
to right standing. We've been redeemed to right standing with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to um. Let's go stay back back to Corinthians. Amen. Quite a these quite a few of these scriptures are 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 in, are in the book of Corinthians. Let's go to um Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter five. Second Corinthians chapter five verses seventeen to twenty one. Second Corinthians chapter five verses seventeen to twenty one, and it reads: Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Hallelujah. Amen. See, I could have said for the sea as well. Amen. Either crucified in Christ and we're new creatures. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 17 again. Uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse, verses 17. Hallelujah to 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself. Glory to God, who has reconciled him to himself. Amen. I could have said for the hour, we've been reconciled. We've been redeemed to right standing. That's re that's being reconciled. Amen. Be, be re hallelujah. Reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. We have been given the ministry to reconcile, amen, others back unto God as we have been reconciled back unto God through Jesus Christ. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Hallelujah. Now, then, we are ambassadors of Christ through God. See, we are ambassadors, amen? We, re we, we represent another kingdom. We are in this earth, we are in this world, but we're not of this world, amen? We are ambassadors of Christ, so therefore, we have diplomatic immunity, glory to God, from anything that Satan would try to uh, raise up or, 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 or charge us with, amen? We have diplomatic immunity because we're representatives of the kingdom of God. We are ambassadors, hallelujah, and we come with all the government and the power of God backing us, hallelujah kingdom of God backing us. Hallelujah. Then now, verse 20 again. Now then we are ambassadors for, uh, for Christ as through God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Verse 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. We've been made the righteousness of God. We've been redeemed back onto right standing, amen, through the cross of Christ. Glory to God. Let's move on to, uh, um, uh, uh, let me see. Oh, there's another scripture, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, amen, redeemed to right standing. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3, hallelujah, verses 13 and 14. Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14 reads, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ has redeemed us. We have been redeemed, y'all. Hallelujah. Verse 14, that the blessing of, why have we been redeemed? Verse 14 answers the question. Amen. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Glory to God. So all these things that God has promised us, <clears throat> excuse me, we get that through faith. Glory to God. Next on, we've been afforded an opportunity. That's the O in, in the cross, amen? We've been afforded, uh, there's been a, a, an open opportunity, open opportunity to everyone, amen? Let's, uh, Romans 10 and 13, this one's, this one's easy. God has opened up an opportunity for everyone to receive Christ. Amen. Romans 10, 13 says, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Glory to God. That's Romans 10 and 13. Amen. And he, he afforded us the opportunity, amen, to be saved. But he also afforded us the opportunity for the S in Christ, amen, to be called the saints of God. Or to be called the sons of God and the saints. Amen. Hallelujah. We have been made, we have been given the power to be called the sons of God. That's one of the opportunities that he has provided for us. Amen. By going to the cross. And he provided for us the opportunity to become saints. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to um, John chapter 1. Got the gospel of John chapter 1, verse 2. Amen. The gospel of John chapter 1. Uh, I'm sorry, John chapter 1, verse 12. Amen. John chapter 1, Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 12. And it reads, 
Ooh. Oh, let, let, let's go back up to uh to verse to verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. So praise the Lord. He made the world, he came into the world, but the world didn't know him. Mm -mm -mm. Not knowing your maker. What a shame. <laughs> Verse 11, he came unto his own and his own received him not. So he came to his own people because he was he was of the Jews. He came to them first and they rejected him, basically. Hallelujah. But you know what? We praise God because there, there are a lot of Jews now that are receiving Christ, Jews, Jews for Jesus. Amen. And at the at the end, when at the end of the day or at the end of the story, at the end of the book, we know that uh, Israel will be restored. Amen. Hallelujah. Jerusalem will be restored. Hallelujah. And then verse 12, here it is, verse 12, he says, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Hallelujah. So, amen, to, be, to become a son of God, you've got to believe in the name of Jesus. And then back again in Romans, he says, if we uh, be, uh, confess with our mouth and believe with our heart, amen, that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, amen, it's with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, amen, so you have to believe that Jesus Christ actually died, went to the cross, died, was buried, and rose again on the third day, amen, and then you have to confess that with your mouth, that is how you receive, that is how you accept Jesus Christ into your life, that's how we all did, those of us that are believers, that's how we all did it, amen, the Romans rode to salvation, hallelujah. So that was uh that was Galatians so that was Galatians chapter I'm sorry that was John Gospel of John chapter one um, verse verse twelve and then there's another scripture for um where he called us saints let's go to uh, I also wanted to read it up from the uh, the Amplified version and while I'm reading while I'm getting John chapter one verse twelve from the Amplified version go get Ephesians chapter five verse three Ephesians chapter five verse three Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. Glory to God. So let me read that um, John chapter 1, verse 12 from the Amplified. And I actually want to start from the uh, from the 10th verse again from the Amplified. And it reads as follows. He came into the world and through and though the, and through the world was made through and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him or did not know him. So he made the world, he came to the world and they was like, okay, who who this be? Uh-huh. Verse 11. He came to that which belonged to him to his own, his domain, creation, things, the world, and they who were his own did not receive him and did not welcome him, Lord. But here it is in verse 12. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, the power, the privilege, and the right, hallelujah, to become the children of God. That is, to those who believe, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name. Glory to God. Amen. So that, that's that's the requirement there again. Hallelujah. And then that last scripture was Ephesians. I said Ephesians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Verses 3. Verse 3. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 3 says. Yes. Ephesians 5 and 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not once be named among you as become its saints. Hallelujah. So now he says, we since we become saints, there are certain things that shouldn't be named of us, or say, named among us. Amen. There's as we become saints, there's certain things that we shouldn't do anymore because we've been changed. Amen. There should be a marked change in our lives when we accept Christ as a, when we receive Christ and acknowledge Christ as our Lord, Savior, King, Deliverer, Hallelujah, Healer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so, so we see that we become the sons of God and we, and we become saints. He's given us that opportunity, y'all. Praise the Lord. And then the, the, the last S on the cross, the last S on the cross, glory to God. He saved us from the penalty of sin and sanctified us. Glory to God. Saved from the penalty of sin. Amen. Because the Bible tells us clearly, amen, in the book of Romans, that the rages of sin is death. Amen. And all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But there is the redemption. Amen. We may have been fallen short, but we have been redeemed, hallelujah, through the work of Christ on the cross. Amen. And the, the, the last few scriptures I want to talk to you is, uh, I want to lead you to is, uh, let's go to first Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. The book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Colossians chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 14. And Colossians 2 and 14 reads as follows. He says, 
Oh, well, you know what? Let's go back with, uh, let's go back up to verse 12. Amen. Colossians chapter two, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Buried with him in baptism, wherein ye are also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who had raised you from the dead. Amen. There's a key phrase that he said here. Amen. Faith of the operation of God. Hallelujah. The operation of God. Amen. Which was, which was, which was executed through Jesus Christ being crucified died and being risen again amen it was an operation amen that was performed for not only in the body of christ but performed for us amen performed on us performed in us that received this truth amen hallelujah let me read that again buried with him in baptism amen wherein we are risen with him through the faith of the operation of god who had raised him from the dead hallelujah glory to god and we're going to talk about the power or the importance of the resurrection on sunday glory to god please tune in amen please tune into the second page hallelujah and verse 13 and you being dead in your sin and in the uncircumcision of your flesh has he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses so we've been forgiven all of our trespasses amen we were once dead in our sins but when we came to christ he has been he he, he has given us life amen the word says he says in his word that i have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly glory to god abundant life is not just it's, it is prosperity but pros prosperity in its totality glory to god prosperity of health prosperity of relationships hallelujah prosperity of finances hallelujah uh Prosperity in, 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 in marital relationships, prosperity in your business, amen, prosperity in ministry, prosperity in, in every way of life, glory to God, prosperity, he, he says in his, oh yes, thank you Lord, Paul says in the scripture, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers, amen, and in one of our previous messages, we talked briefly about the soul, amen, the soul has six compartments, amen, six areas of the soul, the mind, the will, the intellect, the imagination, the emotions, and the memories. Amen. Can't forget the memories. Amen. That is part of your soul. Glory to God. More on that teaching later. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 13, and you being dead again, you being dead in your sin and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, not some, not the big ones, not the little ones, all, every single one of them. Hallelujah. Verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, praise God, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Hallelujah to God. So everything that was against us, amen, was nailed to the cross of Christ. Hallelujah. It was nailed to the cross of Christ. So we've been saved from the penalty of sin. The penalty of sin has been nailed to the cross of Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then verse, let's just ju jump on to verse 15. He says, and being and, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them open openly, triumph, triumphing over them in it. Amen. And then in another place in the scripture, it says, Has the princes of this world knew? Amen. That door to prove you Satan don't know everything, the demons don't know everything. It says, Had the princes of this world knew, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They're saying, you know what? Let, let, leave Jesus alone. Leave, let, leave him alone. Don't touch him. Leave him alone. But they thought they were, they thought they were, they, they were getting rid of it. They said, man, this is the one that has caused more damage and more hemorrhaging in the regions of hell. We need to get rid of this guy and get rid of this guy quick. And, oh Lord, little did they know that that was exactly what God had planned. Amen. For him to die for us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The next scripture is uh first Thessalonians chapter five, verse 23. First Thessalonians chapter five, Verse 23, talking about being saved from the penalty of sin. Amen. And how, <clears throat> excuse me, and how he sanctified us. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 23. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and here it reads. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Here it reads. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, sanctify you completely. Amen. And I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me let me get that from the Amplified. Let, let me let me let me get that from the Amplified. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians 5. 23 from the amplified version reads as follow but let me start let's read it from let's start at the 21st verse first Thessalonians 5 starting at the 25 20 21st verse in the amplified version of the bible 
but test and prove all things until you can recognize what is good to that hold fast. Amen. So once you recognize, once you've tested everything and proven what is good, he said, hold fast to that. This is what you need to hold on to. Abstain from evil, shrink from it, and keep aloof from it. Hallelujah. In whatever form or whatever kind it may be. Here's verse 23. Here's the kicker. And may the God of peace himself sanctify you. Oh, hallelujah. Through and through. Separate you from profane things. Make you pure. Hallelujah. And wholly consecrated unto God. And may your spirit and soul and body. Spirit, soul, not bond, not mind, body, and soul. Your spirit first. Because we are spirit. Amen. We have a mind or a soul and we live in a body. Glory to God. So he, he, he sets he sets the priority. Amen. He sets the precedence. Amen. Hallelujah. That may your spirit, soul, and body may be preserved, sound, and complete. Amen. Hallelujah. And found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Amen. So when Jesus comes, he wants, he wants to find you. Amen. Whole. Amen. He wants to find you separated, sanctified unto him. Amen. Glory to God. He wants to find you clean. Glory to God. Won't he make you clean inside? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a song we used to sing way back in the days, praise God. But it, And it still has truth to it. Amen. Because he will make you clean inside if you want him to. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then the, the last scripture is coming out of uh, John chapter 17. Let's go to John chapter 17, verses 15 through 19. I'll read that from the Amplified Version as well as the uh, the uh, the King James. Well, let's read from the King, the King James first. John, the Gospel of John chapter 17. Oh, hallelujah. We're getting ready to wrap, we're getting ready to wrap it up right here. John chapter 17, verses uh, 15 through 19. John 17, 15 through 19 reads as follows. Whew. Well, let's, let's start at the 14th verse. John chapter 17, starting at the 14th verse. Jesus is speaking to his uh, his disciples. Amen. This is it's there's a title here called Jesus's intercessory prayer. Amen. And the word tells us that he is uh, he, the present day ministry of Jesus Christ is that he is our chief. He is the, the chief intercessor. Glory to God. Standing in the gap for us. Hallelujah. Amen. I have given them thy word, and the world hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. See, we talked about that earlier, amen? We are in this world, but we are not of the world, amen? We have the word of God. Glory to God. I pray not that you shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from evil, from the evil. Glory to God. So he, he, that's, you remember when he taught them the, uh, the disciples' prayer, amen? The, uh, we call it the Lord's Prayer. Amen. That lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Glory to God. Uh, 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 number, no, verse 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So he re-emphasizes that a second time. Amen. He said that in verse 14, and now he is, here, he, here he is again re-emphasizing this same point in uh, verse 16. Verse 17. Oh, I love this part right here. Verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. So we are made sanctified through the word of God. Amen. It is the word of God that sanctifies us, that causes us to be consecrated and separated unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 18, as though, as thou, I'm sorry, as thou hast sent me unto the world, even so I have sent them into the world. Amen. We're sent into the world, y'all, to say, not, not to, to, to the minister saving. Amen. We are ministers of reconciliation, that we may reconcile the world back unto God. Amen. And verse 19, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they might, that they also might be sanctified through, through the truth. Oh, glory to God. So we are sanctified through the truth of the word of God. Amen. And now let me read that from the Amplified, John chapter 17, verses uh, 15. I actually started at verse 14 through 19. John 17, starting at the 14th verse. Amen. Through the 19th verse in the Amplified Bible. And it reads as follows. Whew, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Are y'all being blessed by this? Glory to God. I have given and delivered to them your word, the message. And the world has hated them. See, when you come to Christ, the world's going to hate you. Amen. They're not going to like you. Some of, some of you, have, uh, uh, you know, happy are you that are persecuted for my name's sake. Glory to God. You've been persecuted for Christ. You're on good ground. Glory to God. Because they are not of the world, or do not belong to the world, just as I am not of the world, I do not ask that you will take them out of the world, but that you will keep 
and protect them from the evil one. Hallelujah. They are not of the world or worldly belonging to the world. Say amen. The word tells us that you know a tree by its fruit. Glory to God. Amen. So worldly folk, do they belong to Jesus? Hmm. Amen. They are not of the world or worldly belonging to the world. Amen. We don't belong to the world. We don't behave worldly or secularly. Amen. Just as I am not of the world. Verse 17, sanctify them, purify, consecrate, and separate. All those terms are tied together. Amen. S separate them for, you, for yourself and make them holy by the truth. Your word is true. So again, there it is. I want to reemphasize that point. We are made holy by the truth, not works. Amen. Works don't make us holy. Um, trying to be legalistic and living by the law, that can't make us holy. It is the word, living by the word of God. Amen. That, that is implanted into our hearts. That is engrafted into our hearts. Amen. That makes us holy. Glory to God. We have been made holy. We don't go to church to become holy. We come, we go to church because we are holy. We have been made holy. We have been made righteous. Amen. We see what Jesus did on the cross. Glory to God. He took our sin. Him who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He didn't have any sin. He didn't know any sin. He didn't commit any sin, but he took our sin upon himself. And the righteousness that we couldn't do, that we couldn't create, that we couldn't produce, Amen. Because the word tells us that our righteousness, our, even our right, we are our best days, our righteousness are as filthy rags. And his righteousness was imputed upon us because of the work that he did on the cross. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 17 again, sanctify them. Hallelujah. Purify. Uh, uh, let's make that personal. Sanctify me, Lord. Purify me, Lord. Consecrate me, Lord, and separate me. Hallelujah. For yourself, hallelujah. Make me holy, Lord God. Make me holy by the truth because your word is truth. Amen. Verse 18, just as you have sent me into the world, so also I have sent them into the world. And so for their sake and on their behalf, I sanctify, dedicate, consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified, dedicated, consecrated, and made holy in the truth. So see there, saints? We have been made holy. We have been made sanctified. We've been made justified. Amen. We, we are consecrated. We're separated and sanctified by the word of God. And amen. Just again, just to, just to recap our points, if you will. Amen. I, I, let, me, let me just go over our points again. The C. Oh, hold on. Let me get this right. Amen. The C in the cross. Amen. Is crucified. Christ crucified. Amen. We are, we are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it is not I who live, but Christ liveth in me. And the, the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. Amen. Christ crucified. Amen. Number two, the R in Christ. Amen. We've been redeemed to right standing with God. Hallelujah. We were once afar off, but now we're drawn in. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, the O, he opened up the opportunity. Amen. As we saw in Romans. Hallelujah. In, in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 13, amen, it says that, that whoever, all who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And whoever call upon the name of the Lord shall not be put to shame. Glory to God. So we've been uh, uh, we've been afforded the opportunity to call upon his name to be to be saved. And also we've been afforded to be the opportunity to become the sons of God and to be sanctified. Amen. To all that believe in his name. He to them, to them gave he the power. Hallelujah. We have power to become called or to be called the sons of God. Amen. And we're and we're saints. He says, let none of these things, amen, or any of these sins, iniquities, transgressions that he named in, in so many chapters, let it not be once named about among us who becometh saints. Amen. Becometh. It's we we're, we're, we're continually becoming. Amen. We, we are perfected, but being made perfect in him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then the last one, amen, he saved us from our sin. He saved us from the penalty of sin. And again, he sanctifies us. He sanctifies us. So I just want to thank and praise God for you this, this evening, this, this morning. Hallelujah. And pray that you have been blessed, by, <coughs> excuse me, by the word of God today. I just want to thank you for joining me for this short lesson on the crucifixion. Let's say a short prayer. And then uh, we, we, uh, you'll be dismissed, amen, for, for the rest of your day. Or whenever you're looking at this, I pray that you are blessed. Please share. Please, please share this message with your friends, your family, your co-workers, your associates, amen, um, your cohorts, <laughs> amen, your acquaintances, praise God, hallelujah, and your colleagues. Let's, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do want to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we want to bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord God, for this good Friday. It is a good Friday. 
Hallelujah. A day that we memorialize as the day that you were, the day that you died, the day that you gave your life on the cross, the day that you fulfilled that which your father sent you to do on the earth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm reminded, Lord, uh, in the scriptures where you were in the Garden of Gethsemane, where you said, Lord, if there be any other way, Lord, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, you, you, you settle in and you honed in and you locked in on the will of God for your life. You said, Lord, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Let that be our prayer today, Lord. Lord, not our will, but thine be done. Lord, not what I want to do, but what I ought to do in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I thank you for those who have been listening today. And I pray, Lord God, that this word has been a blessing and an encouragement to their souls. We do want to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. I pray that the, the ears of the church are open so that they, the ears of the hearers are open so that they may hear what the Spirit is speaking to the church. We thank you, Lord God, for in these times that we're living in, that we will continue to protect us, that your word declares unto us that no plague shall come near our dwelling. We thank you, Lord God, that it is through your cross. Hallelujah. You said that by your stripes, that we who, in and, and, uh, uh, and, 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 and Peter 2.24, it says that we who reckon ourselves dead to sin, and alive unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. That means we are healed. Isaiah looked forward to the cross saying, by whose stripes we are healed. Peter looked back at the cross saying, hallelujah, back at the cross, <laughs> saying by whose stripes we were healed. The we were means I am. Amen. So give God the glory, give God the honor, give God all the praise. And we just want to thank each and every one of you today for tuning in. Amen. To Covenant Kingdom International Broadcast on this word on the cross. Amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday. Join us on Sunday. We love you all. Bye-bye.